So connecting the FTDI to the board is actually very simple. Um, you just have to make sure that if you get a FTDI or a USB serial, you have to make sure that this is actually uh, coming with the DTR or reset pin, what it's also called. So um, on the Arduino, um, you have this called like X reset, e XT reset, and you have the ground side, and um, this has to match up. So basically, once you plug that on onto here, it's actually on the board. It's also marked like uh, black and green. So black on the back side, it's actually pretty clear. On the back side here, you can see actually what it really means. It's black means ground, and DTR is the green wire. Uh, I don't know what they call it green. It's a little bit confusing. Um, so basically, you just plug it into your USB port and make sure that actually all the drivers are installed and then you actually just get it onto the FTDI and uh, if this is working basically uh, the LEDs will turn, turn on if you have a problem with the DTR pin it'll not react so once you have your controller hooked up to the um, FTDI you actually go into the update folder unzip it everything um, open this Arduino uploader exe file um, browse for the hex file which is included with this file here um, choose the right COM port choose the right microcontroller that's 328p COM port may differ on your PC um, change this value to 56700 hit upload um, you get uh, a DOS prompt it's writing the flash. After finishing writing the flash, it'll read out the flash again. After it's finished, um, the controller will reboot. You can actually, right after this window close, hit the exit button. Um, yes. Now the new software is on there. The next thing you are doing is actually open the multi configurator. Um, I'm using the 32-bit versions. Um, open this config X file and open the port. Click the start button. Click the read button. And there you are. The board should respond if you turn it. You can't see that right now, but I'm actually moving the board. It's all over the place. So the next thing that you actually do is you set, first of all, your accelerometer right now the LED should be blinking the blue one on your on your controller because the accelerometer is completely off so make sure it's level whether on the floor or on your desktop hit this button it goes to zero and afterwards the Z value will point towards the earth and the blinking should start on your controller that means everything's fine. Now it should actually properly react to roll and pitch and all these things here should, these gizmos should work. Uh, next thing you do is actually adjust the roll value. Put the mouse pointer over that, use the middle wheel mouse, mouse wheel. This has to go to 4, this has to go to 4, this has to go to 7. This arm on aux 1 has to go to high, this horizon has to go on aux 2 to be set to high hit write takes a second hit read uh, sometimes you get some difference here just adjust it back to 4.0 hit write hit read again it should be fine next thing go to settings get this also with your mouse wheel down to 1000 hit the write button hit the read button go back that's basically all you have to do in the GUI in the GUI to actually adjust the values. Okay, so after doing the software update, um, the controller is just here with the settings we just performed. Um, you have to hook your receiver up to these input ports here. There are D2, D4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 which are basically here. Um, first of all, you get the power through this line to the receiver. So this is actually the throttle channel line 
with the power supply, which has to go to D2. Um, throttle port here is actually channel 3. So once I hook this up, the receiver will actually have power straight away and the lights will go on. Next thing you do is actually connect the aileron, which is in this case channel 1. Then we actually have channel 2, which is the elevator. Hook that up as well. Then we go for the rudder, which is channel 4. I'm sorry, I just popped this the wrong way. Um, nothing happens if you actually cut these things the wrong way, unfortunately. And uh, there goes the rudder, channel 4. And then actually we have the fifth channel, which is this white line, which is actually our drive mode switch. And um, then we have the sixth channel, which is the red one, which is actually the flight mode switch. Okay, so we're good to go. This is all hooked up properly. Just to show you what it actually does, I'm going to switch the camera and put it um, a little bit closer to the screen here. So you can actually uh, see what's going on. Okay, hold on a second. So this is the multi V GUI. We just reconnect again, hit the start button. Um, we actually get the signals here from the radio. Um, now this is, I'll get the radio a little bit closer. Um, it's difficult to get it into the screen. Hold on a second. So I put this just aside because it's now the radio we are looking at. Um, so this is actually throttle. Um, you can see how it is moving. Actually, this is not enabled. As soon as I flip this switch, the LED turns on and my flight mode is enabled. So right now I'm flying. You can see how these four motors actually are getting values. So this is actually the throttle channel here enabled. So you can see the motors are actually reacting. Now the servo, steering servo is always on. It always follows the yaw channel. Um, no matter if you switch it, disarm it, you can always steer the car. Now, the, this is actually the ESC for the drive, which is actually following the pitch signal 121. One. But if you flip the switch, it actually remembers the signal and stays there. So you can actually keep on driving, start flying. Once you're in the air, you can actually just go back to the center position and reset that. That actually remembers the last value that was set here from the pitch channel. Uh, another feature is actually if you're flying, um, you can't actually disarm it. If you disarm it, you have to land it first for disarming. Um, anyway, we recommend because it might be the case that you actually by accident just go the throttle all the way down while flying and you have to switch flip. So never flip this switch until you are on the ground and you want to flip back to drive mode. Um, the next thing actually needs to be mentioned is that um, with this knob here, you can toggle the horizon mode. As you can see, when this AUX2 channel goes up, you have the horizon mode here coming up. So um, this, you can at any stage toggle. You can toggle that on ground or while flying. It's seamless. Um, doesn't really matter if it's armed or unarmed. Uh, one important thing is actually when you are testing uh, or updating the software, please always disconnect, always disconnect the motors. Um, it may just start driving or do something. One thing finally to be mentioned, this PID for the level, uh, according to what you expect from the machine to do in horizon mode, you might have to adjust this level a little bit. One final thing to mention, um, on this standard radio, this throttle channel has to be inverted. The switch has to go to reverse upwards. It's also important if you use any other radio control that you 
turn off any kind of mixing, these stick inputs, they have to go out one to one to the receiver. You don't want any helicopter program. You don't want to have any swashplate mixing. You have to go to airplane mode and turn off anything. Flapperons, VTAIL, any kind of mixing, Elevon, whatever has to be turned off. If anything is turned on, this won't work.